Welcome to episode five of my ear training series. While you can jump in at any point, this video is part of a series and is probably easiest when started at the beginning. I'll put the playlist in the video description. Anyway, it's nice to see you all again. Except for you, Brad Johnson of North Dakota. It's not nice to see you at all. Get off my channel, you hear? Get! Go on. Intervals. The most important thing for you to remember is that a major third is the first interval of a major chord. Here's a major chord. Now listen just to the first two notes. That's a major third. The major third is a consonant interval, which means that it's stable. However, because it is not as consonant as the perfect fourth or the perfect fifth, it has a bit more character to the sound. I usually describe the sound as bright. Listen to a perfect fifth and specifically try to hear that hollowness that I'm always talking about. Now listen to a major third. Do you hear how it has a somewhat more emotional sound? Some songs that start with a major third would be When the Saints Go Marching In. If you're a nerd that listens to Baroque era music, you might be more familiar with The Spring from The Four Seasons by Vivaldi. Exercises. Oh boy, we have got a lot to review. Remember, a first sounds like the same note. A major second sounds like the first two notes in a major scale, or happy birthday. A major third is part of a major chord. It has a bright sound and it is used in When the Saints Go Marching In. A perfect fourth has a hollow sound and is used in Here Comes the Bride. A perfect fifth has a hollow sound and is used in Star Wars. A major seventh sounds dissonant and wants to resolve up to the octave. An octave sounds like a big jump or somewhere over the rainbow. You really need to be paying attention to which intervals you are constantly getting right or consistently getting right and which ones you are consistently getting wrong so you know what to focus on in your future practice. Octave. Major third. Major second. Perfect fourth.
Major seventh. Major third. Perfect fifth. Major second. First. Perfect fourth. Tip of the week. I've got some bad news for you. Using tunes to identify intervals can only get you so far. It's a helpful way to introduce intervals, but if you really love something, then maybe it's best to eventually let it go. Go, Tune Association. Just go. I don't need you anymore. Don't come back. I can identify intervals without you now. You'll be happier without me. When I hear this, I don't think, hmm, that kind of sounds like uh, when the saints go marching in. So, so which one is that? Is it a fifth? No, a fifth is Star Wars, right? Uh, so, it, oh, it's a third, a perfect third. Wait, it, no, uh, no. A major third? Yeah, that's it. It's a major third. That's my answer, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, yeah. No. Here's what goes through my head. Why? I do so reckon that my ears were just treated to the dulcet, somewhat bright tones of a major third. How do I know that it's a major third, you ask? Why? Because it sounds like a major third. I hear an interval, and I just know what it is. There's no long string of unnecessary steps that go through my head. It wasn't always like that, though. I had to work hard and use a gradual release of these little tricks and tune associations. It's a great tool to associate intervals with songs, but it's meant to be a disposable tool. Made to be used, and then eventually thrown away to rot in a landfill for the next 10,000 years. How do you wean yourself off of using tunes? There are four steps. Step one. Every time you hear an interval, try to focus first on the tonal quality of the interval. Pay special attention to the words I use, such as bright, hollow, dissonant. Also, think about how far apart they sound. A third sounds close together, and seventh sound far apart. Now, yes, you can use tunes to identify these intervals, but that should be um, sort of the second thing you're thinking about. And the first thing is all these inherent tonal qualities. Step two. Be aware of the intervals you were playing and singing. Try to constantly find yourself going, Oh, this song uses a major third. Oh, nice to see you again, perfect fifth. What are you doing here, major seventh? This is a respectable piece of music, thank you very much. Step three. Learn to sing every interval, and they'll eventually be branded right into the muscle memory of your vocal cords. And finally, step four. Like and subscribe.